everyone for your participation. Um, so hybrid work environment as a consequence of the pandemic has changed the way we work. Um, workplaces have been forced to accelerate their digitalization initiatives. And as a result, we have seen a surge in digital adoption along with surprising innovations. Now, hybrid environment is here to stay. And so are digital innovations and strategies that will shape the future of the workplace. Our discussion today with the accomplished panelists will examine digital strategies for a hybrid environment, how we can optimize it, and what challenges we may face. So, um, so my first question to the panelists is, in your particular sector or industry, can you recall best practices of digitalization in a hybrid environment? Uh, who'd like to start? Okay, Arun, I, I'll take it up. Uh, so uh, thank you for putting up this question. Arun, I will just first uh, uh, brief about my industry and what kind of digital initiatives we took before I move on to the best practices. So I, uh, being part of Spice Money, which is a rural uh, fintech and cut across uh, four, largely four uh, uh, units, which is related to business, uh, banking and payments, travel, credit, lending, and uh, agri-tech. So here, if we talk about the digitalization or digital transformation initiatives. So we uh, largely invested a lot of uh, effort and in terms of investment in uh, uh, digitalization, uh, like adoption of RPA uh, for automation of the user processes, uh, the low code, no code tools, which uh, covers across workflow engines and business rule engines, and then more largely about building our data IP or data strategy. So here, if I talk about talking about the hybrid environment, in most of the cases where we have to uh, adopt this journey, what we felt that data is the key that uh, is required to take all the initiatives. And data, if you are maintaining into an on-premise environment, it takes a lot of maintenance effort and you focus, your focus actually digresses from core activities to non-core activities. So first decision that we took is that data, we, we don't want to invest our efforts into maintenance activities or what is non-core to our business. So we thought that it will be wise decision to put across this information, chunks of data, onto cloud environment where we adopted BigQuery and uh, related tools. And we built upon the processes which our uh, large, uh, rest of our workloads largely reside uh, into, again, into hybrid environment, largely into uh, the on-premise and then onto cloud. And being into financial services, which is highly regulated, you never know where, when a regulation changes. So we have to be mindful of that particular fact. So we automated a lot of uh, processes in terms of like be it the complaint handling uh, QRC, which follows a typical flow or uh, like uh, optimizing or digitalizing the reconciliation process where it used to take us days. Like now we have moved it to hours where people are no longer spending time in downloading the bank statements, reconciling into the system where we utilized like uh, the RPA process, the uh, data warehouse and the visualization tools. And in terms of uh, business rule engines or workflows, we involved the business users where they are also participating as a part of the development process rather than just being the consumers. So here, if you see in all the initiatives, what we felt is that no matter in which sector you are, you have to personalize the customer experience because in our case, we follow three uh, pillars. One is your experience, other is your design uh, and data. And third thing is uh, your security. So all things are very important. So governance practices, risk and compliance is key for our uh, industry. So we cannot uh, uh, negotiate or compromise on this. Second thing, like personalization is very important. Third thing which we learned is that learning from uh, your own industry and across industries is important. It is not that uh, disruption or something, uh, best practices will only emerge from your industry. Like in, in case of other uh, cases also, you will find that disruption always is done by the cross industry rather than your own industry. Fourth thing is it is important that we end the data silos, uh, which is there. So we collect a lot of data, but many, uh, very few organizations, I will say, put perspective to that particular data. So we utilize that information in creating personalized experience for our merchants and our customers. So, and, and 
the last thing i i believe in the digitalization journey is that you have to redefine the jobs the roles and you have to skill your talent uh, which is uh, rare as of now like especially the tech talent which has become rare so these are the best practices that we followed uh, as such in the digitalization or digital transformation journey in a hybrid environment thanks for that uh, perspective uh, ma'am um um Mr. Gupta, um, what's been your experience, and can you give me some perspectives from your industry? Yeah. Okay. Uh, see, I belong to an aviation industry. Initially, we run uh, luxury business aircrafts, uh, India and abroad. So our uh, clients are premium, and uh, they have very ex high expectations, you know, from uh, uh, from the flying uh, journey. So uh, we have created uh, first everything on cloud. all over application and everything are integrated and uh, put on a cloud and we have a window single window access in our office wherein you know whether it's pilot or it's uh, ground staff or it's a reservation team or it's a, it's a client uh, executive everyone uh, gets a seamless information we have we have created a crm in, in house crm through which we share the information across the network across all the people and uh, you know it's it's a 24 cross 7 industry so at the midnight of the the mid midnight or early morning or late evening any time you get receive a call that this minister or this person needs to fly so you have to be prepared for the information his their priorities and lot many things which are really very customized to a very particular flight so be it the catering be it the things so all things have to be synced so the big, big, biggest digital transformation that we have achieved is that we have synced all these things into a one crm application wherein everyone can be in uh, sync and um, work together and the best practice is you know we we follow is in in the training and educating the thing which i have been following it up since 1990 that i learned from klm my first uh, job in airline industry where we used to get computer based training uh, floppies mm -hmm. 720 kb floppies you know that time that the computers were quite less and uh, there were questions and there were small uh, uh, you know uh, guidance uh, audio which the every staff would listen every individual would listen and then they will get into the question answer mode and then there will be a survey system which they will automatically file and save and everything and it will be you know given to the instructor and li like this how this is how it used to be happening following the same process we have developed you know some of the training and learning program to quickly because skill and training is a very uh, uh, you know big requirement uh, to the or to the staff who interacts with customer and all the at all the touch points so we we now this is all on uh, on youtube and you know videos and, and and it's in a cloud environment where you have everything access from your mobile and you can be in a real time answering mode and some uh, instructor and somebody can view your things your performance and things live online or how much time what kind of a accent you are following so there are a lot of uh, you know ai and ai tools that we have put in in the background mm -hmm. that helps us uh, evaluate assess and then guide the uh, person that how they should be performing so that's the thing that we have followed and which has given us an edge over other charter players and of course uh, the last thing was uh, you know the contactless check in so for that also we tried and use certain mobile based uh, home grown applications which could and uh, help them you know to make a minimum contact with the passenger fantastic that's all i would like to say fantastic uh, mr purohit uh, can you share some of your experiences and your perspective yeah so uh, i come from an uh, industry which is a digital native industry so for us the digital transformation started 6 years back and uh, in order to become completely digital with us the hindrance was more from a regulatory perspective rather than the intent with the organization so what we had done is that we had converted all our non core processes uh, cloud native okay the core processes were still on prem because regulatory uh, requirements were there what uh, <clears throat> covid helped that regulator became little open mm -hmm. and they allowed us to take core processes also um, into hybrid so today we are 90% cloud 10% on prem 
to the tune what it required in our case was reimagining of the entire tech stack so if you ask me the best practice which we have implemented uh, is converting our core to be completely customer centric and digital enabled so this gave us an opportunity wherein can i convert my core in line with expectation of the customer rather than creating a core which is just helping processes and transactions to be achieved okay so when we built tech stack we built tech stack bases the requirements which are primarily in terms of transactions processes tasks workflows so these are inside out what we have done is an outside in approach wherein when we got an opportunity and we said that look it's not going to give me any value everybody is doing it so let me take this opportunity and convert my entire stack outside it we created a data lake we created various middlewares and we said that let us define each and every workflow from a customer journey perspective so as of today we have a single row for a customer across its life cycle be it in terms of data be it in terms of its transactions be it in terms of processes and entire stack is able to service the entire life cycle of the customer from awareness till onboarding engagement and if he or she wishes to close the account it's all digital fantastic um thanks for that um mr safi um, over to you thanks arun so i come from a, a different industry which is basically a legal industry and we are uh, one of the finest and premium law firm in the country uh, so my few cents on this particular item is uh, that when we talk about uh, defining the digital strategy or digital transformation be it the on premise environment or in the hybrid environment i think the first and foremost thing is that we have to understand what are the needs and needs from a uh, the company standpoint and b the user standpoint many a times we have seen a lot of projects uh, start with with lot of enthusiasm in between or towards the end we see that those projects are failing and those are all in the form of digital transformation so i think it is really really important that we get into the user shoe try and see why are we trying to make that change what are the real needs of the user and basis that then you go and define all the you know the road maps and the strategy around the digital transformation uh in our case uh, i think there are various uh, various points related to the digital transformation a what we have seen during the pandemic even the courts started operating online so unlike before that uh, it was it was hardly anybody has heard that courts are happening online uh now we will see whether that trend really continues once the hybrid environment is kicked in so that's uh, that is having an external dependencies but as far as our firm is concerned we have really gone and taken a big initiatives while these initiatives have been going on for many years but few initiatives were expedited during the pandemic starting from uh, you know trying and find uh, how we can increase the productivity of the lawyers uh, how we can make sure that they are productive regardless of which location that they are working from uh, so for that we have uh, enabled and given some of the ai ml related tools which actually helps them to save uh, their their work to an extent of 60 to 70% whether they are doing the due diligence work or whether they are doing the uh, the the proof reading work so various type of work that they do so we have tried and embraced a lot of technologies around that and in addition uh, the other com- key component is the uh, continuous training to the lawyers so that's where we have also uh, enabled a online learning management system to the uh, to all the lawyers and that is having again the ai ml based algorithms which really goes and recommend what sort of trainings that others are attending and you should also attend so those are a couple of things and uh, the other thing i would resonate with rajiv gupta is that no matter what we are doing 
I think it is very important to a create the story around it. So when we are saying we want to initiate or launch this initiative, what is the user story around that particular initiative? What is the problem that we are trying to solve? Create some personas around that. And B is really going and training them. Now, the training has to be really intuitive. It has to be uh, based on the engagement. It has to be, it has to have some gamification component. If it is a traditional training, then there are chances that people will just go and complete it from the sake of uh, formality process, but they will not be 100% into it. So some of the trainings and some of the user story elements that we do in the firm, we really make sure that those elements are specially taken care of. Yeah, thanks. Over to you, Arun. Fantastic. Um, thanks for that. Uh, Mr. Solanki, how about you? How has your experience been? Yeah, hi. <clears throat> yes, uh, being a healthcare segment, so it is difficult to us to manage uh, the uh, during the pandemic, uh, the contactless transactions and all. Uh, and many expect like patient uh, don't want to touch on a doctor and nurse also uh, afraid to touch the patient so in this in that scenario wherever possible with the help of technology we made the arrangement like consent form it's a, earlier it was a paper now we made it to otp based consent form so that way we managed the show and and the credit card exchange so instead of credit card exchange sms will go and patient can do the payment so those things we enabled and then during the COVID, uh, patient, nurse, doctor, everybody uh, is afraid to touch to each other. So uh, on that segment, technology help a lot. And that enablement, yes, it is a, not a one-time task. It's a journey, digitalization, it's a journey, it's, it's a continue. But many things we are incorporating and, and uh, making user to do the things by themselves like we are enabling mobile app to uh, get the uh, in touch with doctor with hospital and then they can select appointment so many things we are incorporating in our digital journey and then we'll keep continue as time is short so i'll not take much time over to you Arun. Uh, thank you mr solanki um, dr rajendran um, over to you you're not audible. Uh, thank yeah. you, Arun. Uh, I think the previous uh, speakers has uh, spoken a lot of areas. I think it is uh, yeah, new areas for me to even hear from them to understand what they do in the uh, digital areas. Um, I come from the uh, uh, place where uh, I was totally on to the uh, BFSA segment. So it is the complete transformation from the banking industry to a digital era and to the payment system into the uh, digital systems. And now it is the market infrastructures. See, they, they throughout my experience and the, in the strategies, if you talk about the key things about the um, customer experience, uh, second thing is the, we need to build a confidence among the customers while doing any digital transactions. That is the second thing. And uh, the, the third one, which is crucial, is the data. Everywhere it is the data. So it's all in and around the data. And when you, when you talk about the, uh, the transformations where the banking industry took uh, during those days, uh, there were the first, the data were stored in the, in the papers, in the books. When you go to the bank, they used to write the ledgers in the books and physically store into the local branch. Then they converted into digital, then storing in the branch, then later on, then it go to regional office, then later on, it went to the centralized banking system. This way, everything. So when you talk about the, uh, the, uh, the strategy on the on-prem or the cloud in the hybrid modes, Yes, it, it is it is case to case and depends upon the need basis The decision can be arrived. You are protecting your data, so RBI, whether it is the, uh, the in-short storing and uh, guarding the, the data in secure manners. Okay. And the um, uh, when you do this kind of things, how this hybrid strategy will work out. See, one of the examples which uh, I can able to uh, quote to you that during the pandemic times, and a lot of people suddenly started working from the home. 
and uh, there is no way to either they come to office take their and need to start allowing them to start doing the work from their own devices how it is possible then it is the, the strategy was adopted you go to your a cloud and take a, a virtual desktop from the cloud then assign to them them allow them to access from anywhere and any desktops so that has given more comfort to people to come back into the work and uh, the uh, immediately and increase the productivity as well as the to secure your data because data is available in the on prem but only the virtual desktop been used to only access the data this is the one one kind of the strategy which uh, we have adopted other areas if you talk intermediate the infrastructure is mis so we'll talk to any any about any capital market any exchanges and uh, is very very hesitant to even uh, share any data anywhere it cannot be said because the all decisions are based on the data so it is a very crucial thing and while how it is can be protected that's why the uh, if you see the things a lot of digitization works it is so very important in terms of the you wanted to do store and secure the data so you need to have the strategy that how this data can be uh, stored secure and is not able to allow anybody to misuse the data so for that what you need to do you need to do while uh, the storing it should be encrypted while processing it should be encrypted while sharing the information you cannot share it only need basis what is their need only can be share it so this if you are able to bring yeah the approach the uh, to handle the hybrid or it is the uh, you wanted to drive maybe more more processing at a cloud environment and data still residing at your environment and you will able to achieve and the successful what is your strategy to for short term to long term thank you dr rajendran um, mr kishore over to you thank you arun <clears throat> i think uh, coming in the last is everybody has spoken about it so uh, very less to be said but yeah we <clears throat> i come from a pharmaceutical uh, company background and uh, our presence is globally uh, so digitization is one of the enablers uh, which uh, helps us to uh, increase the efficiency and is to uh enhance or better the decision making decision accuracy i think that's the most important thing when you have discovery uh, drug discovery and clinical trials uh, in manufacturing and marketing how do we make sure that we digitize it now when we have to digitize we'll have to also look at like other industries a lot of regulatory and compliance uh, rules that has to be followed across now when we follow it uh, especially for the uh, or the data privacy we'll have to store in those countries uh, that data we have to convert the hybrid on prem and cloud and make sure the availability of uh, the resources are at much higher structure has uh, bring in the era when we can innovate and automate a lot of our business processes i think that's where the efficiency cost saving and we talk about a lot of cyber security stuff i think we are continuing to evolve ourselves and a lot of uh, work is being going on in manufacturing especially for higher operational efficiency can can i how can i digitize uh, and uh, believe me we are working on a lot of legacy uh, manufacturing uh, machinery uh, which has to be uh, which has to be looked at with a lot of iot's uh, uh, to be placed across to get the data um, into a historian and then analyzed across all factories across the world there at warehousing and data lake Uh, to make sure that we have a, a complete uh, coa cockpit uh, around all the control towers uh, which is being made and uh, that that gives us more business efficient more better decision making so we come from into a predictive uh, plants uh, all of you and uh, our focus uh, is not one area but anything which creates value business so uh, the uh, talking to marketing financial and uh, uh, by the uh, when the period laps uh, together uh, i think the journey is towards the cloud uh, but when we look at cloud how do we secure the data how do we make sure that uh, our data is uh, much more uh, reliable i think that's that's something which we'll have to look at because whenever we go to cloud there are two distinct uh, 
layers of it. There's something which is managed by a service provider and something that has to be managed by us. Now that's that's where you look at managed service providers across in the cloud digitization. And uh, in order to optimize the resources, you look at a lot of auto scaling uh, based on the time, duration, geographies that you're working in. So that's where on-premise and cloud difference comes across. And uh, in pharma specifically, we are looking much of uh, the data from, uh, I think a lot of drug discovery where people are working uh, on a lot of data points across and how the patient touch points are there. I think a lot of uh, uh, patients on the blockchain uh, aspects of it that uh, ensures that the data is interlinked. It cannot be changed during the audit trails. It is safer, uh, much more safer across. I think that's that's something which we are looking at. But it, it is bringing us closer to a digital twin and a quantum computing aspect of it. Great. Thank you, Mr. Kishore. Um, so there was a first set of responses that were fantastic. Um, uh, the paucity of time we may have to, uh, you know, give in answer. Um, the second workplace in the past was not built to be a primary workplace and wasn't intuitive. And of course, that has all changed. So how have you factored human-centered design as part of the digital experience? Um, the question is uh, to Mr. Raju Gupta. Yeah. See, uh, the thing is uh, that uh, even uh, before this change, uh, we, we had a lot of uh, uh, employees who have always been on field, you know, whether on airport or traveling to different locations. So we did not have to make much of the change in the design of the things and all, except for the people who used to do the reservations from the office. And being, uh, you know, the airline aviation industry is always on the big servers, mainframe servers and all the things. We could quickly move to, and also we could... Uh, uh, easily switch to these things. So we did not face much of the challenges uh, regarding this except for arranging the, the devices, uh, you know, for them so that they could access it from home. And uh, most of our things were uh, iPad and uh, pad friendly. And so we, we, we could get things done faster than others. Okay. Thanks. Um, uh, Dr. Rajendran, over to you. I just I briefed earlier that uh, when it's a workforce to handling the workforce, the hybrid environment. So the there, there are two ways to connect to any an enterprise or the uh, an entity. Uh, either it is the uh, virtual desktops or yeah, uh, a VPN, virtual private network connectivities. Okay, mostly adapted and most secure because while you are allowing a virtual access, you must protect the, the end user, cannot copy, cannot download anything to the local systems, and you need to protect the entire data and not to upload anything into the system from their local environment. So to protect that one, the virtual desktop environment, it is in form of the clouds. You can get it from any public cloud as a uh, creating a virtual desktop and wherever you have very sensitive uh, access to the systems and the VPN is uh, probably used to and have multiple filtering and creating a, an access to the uh, the uh, um, the end user who is the wanted to access the core devices at your organization. So these two things while we're doing, you must plan a, a cyber security such a way that and the, you cannot trust anybody coming into the Subaru like it is control and monitoring need to be established. Then you are successfully able to give the yeah, a seamless experience to end user as well as the yeah, good performance or the uh, able to get a support from your internal team in any time and anywhere. Thank you, Dr. Rajendran. Uh, Mr. Solanki, over to you. Yeah, uh, this uh, hybrid work environment depend on the industry uh, being a healthcare so physical presence is required uh, from all the segment to serve the patient so in that manner uh, hybrid workplace not much uh, applicable for healthcare 
be provided to doctor on their mobile app so you can do many things from the home similarly uh, like you um, uh, employees who can't come uh, to the uh, hospital because of the transport and other uh, issues so we given the vpn access so this way we manage but uh, a hybrid workplace uh, not much applicable for the healthcare industry okay uh, mr kishor over to you yeah so uh, there has to be inclusive we have to collaborate uh, co create and uh, bring out those changes uh, i think that's what we are looking at uh, uh, whenever we are looking at uh, these things and i think all enablers are available in the market you know, how easily it is adopted uh, uh, by the team that thing that that's very important of it i think that's that's the uh, goal that we have selected uh, for more inclusiveness uh, for all the projects that we implement and so what we bring out is bring in a prototype uh, bring the changes continuously make make them collaborate uh, for the creation of that project and then launch it i think that's what we Thank are you. looking at um, mr safi over to you yeah thanks so this is an important question because if you look at uh, our day to day life most of our consumers be, be those are internal or the external i think they are experiencing a high degree of greater experience in their day to day life whether they are using amazon of the world uber of the world zomato swiggy of the world these are some of the examples so hence their expectation is that when our it team or if you are interacting to some company their solution should also be at a same level of uh, experience and they should be really uh, so that's that's the challenge i think because you really cannot beat some of those big uh, big giants in the technology but however that's the user expectation when it comes to the experience so that's a um and in our case yes we do make sure that whenever we are building some of these solutions we make sure that each of these solutions has been thought about from each of those perspective and those experience elements has been taken care of we do enough stress testing uh, like i resonate with manish um there has to be a prototype that needs to get built and those prototype needs to be tested before even really going implement this is accordingly i think a lot of noise needs to be created in the forms of that people are joining uh, joining your hands to to adopt that particular initiative and it is it is applicable for both the internal cust uh, thank you over to you miss kaur yeah so uh, um, uh, arun uh, while uh, employee side most of our fellow panelists have already so i will learn. what we followed in uh, during the pandemic that when we call about the human centric design so design thinking is the first approach and practice that comes to mind so what we did we trained our people we did uh, workshops on design thinking as an approach and then we implemented in it, this into practice where our merchants like we serve for tier 3 and tier 4 cities which is largely rural and while we say that in b2c space the user journeys matter we discovered that in to b2b to c space also uh, these user journeys are important so what we started doing is that whatever we are thinking sitting in ac rooms we go and validate with the people who actually have to use our products and services that we are offering so uh, we create low fidelity design high fidelity designs we validate them we uh, ask them whether it is going to serve the use case which we are trying to do and uh, once it gets validated then uh, we implemented it so it helped us uh, reduce the technical debt it reduced the uh, amount of effort because if your design is not adopted after it is implemented there is a huge cost involved into it and people become more uh, adaptive to the fact that it is not about the design which was wrong it is something where if they missed out uh, understanding some requirement there is a opportunity for them to uh, make it better even in, in initially in the design phase so this was the uh, i would say this was a a uh, first and biggest initiative in terms of which brought a lot of change in terms of how our how our user journeys are defined and then uh, overlapping onto it uh, during the pandemic time the research says that uh, uh, on an average people created around 27 new uh, online accounts right and that means that there were a lot of new users who were there they were keeping the same passwords 
so it was also important while we are creating the user journeys we are also creating and mapping the attacker journeys uh, to that particular user journey so that we can safeguard and the other thing which was there like my fellow panelist mentioned about the employee security and i believe humans are the weakest link in the entire uh, security chain where uh, awareness is the only way where you can protect uh, against all the cyber security challenges which are there so and there was a resistance in people why should i do uh, or follow this way i was doing it earlier also so it is very difficult for uh, us also to uh, make that people adopt that vertical ways so we followed that approach also how to make it intuitive so that people also collaborate and follow and they don't fall into the traps we did a lot of trainings and we reskilled people because there was a lot of uh, automation that we did during the journey so i i will summarize it this way only thank you uh, mr purohit over to you yeah uh, so i'll give you a very different perspective uh, because most of the uh, perspective has been taken care of uh we from in a workforce perspective although i said that we are a digital native uh, industry but from a workforce perspective we are 100% non digital because we are into relationship management where we handle some uh, our customers money okay so what as of today we are 60% uh, hybrid work environment what this opportunity brought to us is that when a person a relationship manager or a person who is serving the customer when he used to serve the customer he used to access not less than nine systems at a point of time in terms of understanding his portfolio advising him performing transactions for him and providing these nine systems in a hybrid environment was next to impossible so when the pandemic hit we started uh, delivering the most important but that was not sufficient for him to serve the customer better because customer saw a deficiency in service pre pandemic uh, pre hybrid work environment and uh, post so what helped us is that we thought that look till now we have worked or we have implemented design thinking we have rearchitected our systems from a customer standpoint let me take this opportunity and rearchitect or create a dashboard for my relationship managers who in turn will talk to these nine systems and will give him one view which he or she needs to service the customer and if i can provide the same dashboard to my customers so that they both can create a face to face environment like if i am helping you with your portfolio i need to come sit with you make you understand discuss you have some suggestions i incorporate it then and there and that's how the uh, financial or the investments is done so we not only created one dashboard for our uh, uh, um, employees and partners we created the similar for the customers so that his needs were sufficed and the co creation model which was existent in the physical environment also was sufficed great right. thank you for that response um now the third question is um multiple tools for collaboration or one unified tool which is more effective uh mr gupta yeah i see there is no single tool uh, that serves all that serves everything and uh, second is you have to go by the user choice also that which kind of a tool they are adoptive on and all the things so it cannot be a single tool you always have to be you know you have to start your journey with the multiple tools and then you have to see where in you can and, uh, and uh, you know like the very first thing was having the zoom meetings or these meetings so uh, conversant on gmail some were conversant on the team so we try to uh, make arrangements for everyone for from every prospect point of view and slowly and slowly we get into it. thing into the uh, access applications we made sure that chrome uh, things which could help us work on both kind of apple you know, chrome as our browser system and uh, we still on like, because there were a lot of many home grown things so we said that okay whenever they are being accessed on a mobile they are generally on a fiber 7 mobile and standards and we guided our users to make themselves used to of that kind of an environment The, the, the rather than tools we standardize on the devices you know we guided our users that they should 
standardize on the certain size of the screen and resolution which helped us achieve our goals faster and make uh, a seamless uh, experience among the uh, user team and naturally for the customer side uh, uh, they have the, the, the customer applications have always been flexibility you know to give them a choice and making sure that they get uh, to make it as easy as they don't have to go for any help on the browsing the things thank you uh, mr sari over to you thanks um i have few perspectives on this question so a uh, from enterprise standpoint i think we all believes that yes there has to be one unified communication system that we should be going and providing to the user because of various reasons a uh, there is one single uh, neck to choke um, there is one solution that you can manage monitor and and do all of uh, those kind of stuff so as an enterprise everybody believes that but when you look at the user as well due to in solution as well for those particular needs and the third is really the customer and uh, so say uh, not naming this solution say you have standardized one solution in the enterprise but if a customer is choosing the third or fourth solution then you will also have to um, accommodate to it uh, in the coming to the hybrid environment i think one of the most challenging aspect is that uh, as long as people were working from home or working from anywhere they were using whichever solution it was all working well for them because all that they need is the laptop uh, mic and and really the headphone that's the only thing that they need but when it comes to the hybrid so now say half of the team is going to office and half of the team is on uh, at home uh, now how do they collaborate that means all the systems that you have in your offices they should also support these modern unified communication technologies along with all the traditional technologies that they they have been supporting so you got to really do the re architecture of all the unified collaboration systems that are there in the offices make sure that those are supporting uh, not just the legacy but as well as the modern ones and also if there is a need from compelling need from user to have another collaboration system uh, to be enabled in the firm then i think that also needs to be provided uh, but make sure that there is only one solution that is uh, there from the enterprise wide and people should really go and use it and of course there are exceptions that needs to be managed yeah thanks thank you um mr polohit over to you i agree in fact with both the fellow panelists uh we cannot have a use case mr safi has said but just to add on to what these both have said that this collaboration tools need primarily occurred because of pandemic prior to that we were very happy with our multiple diaries pens and um, face to face meetings and uh, minutes of meetings and etc so to my understanding and what we have observed is that we have um, uh, it's a journey which every organization solution for only pick and choose our collaboration tools and journey of converting these multiple tools into single tool is also and will also depend upon industry and not only industry the departments which are using leave aside the industry or an organization there are departments who are using multiple collaboration tools so it is interdepartmental also so we are at a very initial stage and the products will also evolve so when everything came products are also at a very nascent stage so it is in a huge um, uh, i would say uh, scope both from an um, organization as well as product companies where they work together understand the use case do lot of pocs and come out with solution as of today we have used this approach wherein we are working with lot of product companies we work with almost three product companies on various collaboration tools and are working with them to create a customized product for us and this is how i think for next 4 to 5 years this will move right thank you um miss kor what do you yeah so arun i feel there is no single swiss knife available as of now which will solve all the, the uh, problems that you have or all the queries that you have so as of now what we look for a tool is that which can provide us a, a good collaboration capabilities and uh, uh, reduce the effort of integration 
should not take uh, somebody to have to be an expert to integrate those tools uh, into a collaborative environment and what uh, i believe is that apart from the tool it is very important that the metrics which we are planning to measure those are available what i feel is that while tools are available they do certain stuffs but there are certain things which are uh, there are certain features which are not required as such so it is just a fancy uh, uh, wish list which most of us have that okay i need a tool which covers all this stuff the basic requirements should be covered what the tool should provide feedback information that is there so i, I will summarize this way because most of uh, the points have been already covered okay. by my final mr kishore over to you yeah so i think a lot has been said uh, by rajiv ji irshad and rohit ji <coughs> so what uh, what has happened is uh, see uh, i second the point that we cannot have one uh, single uh, enterprise application but there has to be a convergence point uh, for all the uh, departments because every department has different needs so i'm talking about you will have to so they talk to each other uh, whenever we select multiple tools so let's say finance wants to interact with supply chain or a supply chain wants to talk to manufacturing how do they uh, collaborate together it is not a single um, communication tool that we are talking about it is not for about video conferencing how the minutes are being recorded how the tasks are being assigned how are being monitored i think all those converge together uh, to so what we have done is we we have looked at uh, uh, api gateway platform which converges all these collabor all these tools together into one and we are trying to make uh, that work uh, uh, so that uh, there is one place where uh, it's a kind of intranet uh, for all of them which which can join all those tools together and at least behave uh, as a family together thank you dr rajendran yeah i think the uh, mr uh, prakit and mr kishore has well said about the the providing a single interface to the end customer or end user that is the way we need to look into the things so how the uh, single tool concept so why it is very important to so they if you take the example of the uh, banking cas mobile app then you can get a unified communication unified interface that's what the upa calls uh, upa is the unified payment interface so you get a single in the single app you can able to do the an immediate fund transfer or you can do the uh, vpa based fund transfer and you can do the a uh, delayed file uh, uh, transfer like an neft then you can do the real time transfer uh, or so all these functionalities all the complexity should be taken care by the the systems or the the um, uh, team of the enterprises but the end user should get a, a single view and single access single interface then they can able to do their business and with the easy experience that is one very important thing for the a customer base say the another areas where we need to see a single view or single interface say a security operating center it have to integrate with all the data whether it is the login whether it is an authentication whether entered into the organization whether it is the um you there you were, all this have to be integrated to be analyzed and take a decision based on the uh, inputs received from various parameters so if you see like the things uh, in the uh, for a fraud and risk management or the surveillance whatever you call it as the entire things need to be brought into under single umbrella so what is the underlying concept required every application provide must ensure the things they all are creating a Yes, systems where they can able to easily interface with the other systems. That is an API-based uh, things. If they are able to provide, then it is a win-win situation for everybody. Because a single app cannot the meet every needs of the organization or the people. So then, then if we are able to create a single view so that is the the uh, way we can able to approach the one thing i wanted to tell because this is the digital initiatives the the strategy on communicating the end customers so through the sms or the uh, the mobile i think now it is a time to 
stop people should not start calling on the using an, an IVR systems, using a, a tele, tele call, uh, call or telemarketing or sending an SMS things. And because you now how, how you put a lot of effort to educate the end customer, it will not able to get familiarize everybody because maybe sometimes many users will come maybe monthly once to use the digital product. So you may not be able to get understand what kind of things and to at least that will create a lot of confidence in the industry while growing together in the, uh, the digital uh, journey. Because every data, if you take a hospital industry, if you take a, a airline industry or a pharmaceutical industry, anywhere you go, you give a mobile number. Then you give the then, after that, if you give the hospital, you give all your data bath and everything. Then you have all your history of all the data and everything. So what are the things? Lot of areas are commonly used in the many places to do the authentication. So that's why this well wanted to make a digital strategy success, reduce the to doing. I think we need to get information is okay, but you cannot collect, you should not ask any information in the enable it together and create it because otherwise it, it, it will be creating a lot of hurdles into the digital journey. I think with this, I will just close. Thank you. Um, Mr. Solanke, over to you. Yeah, as uh, my other panelist friends uh, very well said, uh, there is a no multi uh, or single uh, mm -hmm. application to fulfill the organization requirement. So multi application is running in each organization utilize this platform and uh, in this segment and helping the organization they should focus to develop the application where that at least that industry uh, product they can develop and it will take care of everything and it should be a model based uh, uh, like configurable uh, module so if organization don't need a so they can remove a and then they can procure so that way in healthcare also we have a like a feedback different application HIS we called a different application so many application it is difficult to CIO or any uh, CTO CIO IT head uh, to manage all those things vendor management is very difficult on that part and and uh, if many interfaces are there if one of one goes down then your backbone is goes uh, going down and and the user experience will be worst on that part so. Uh, I would request, yes, it is not available currently, but it should come in future, a uh, single application to suffice the uh, uh, organization need in each uh, industry. So I will uh, close in that manner. Fantastic. Um, thank you everyone for your fantastic, insightful uh, responses and for sharing your experience. Um, firstly, I thought it was a very good discussion on the topic. Uh, please share any concluding remarks, um, Dr. Rajendra. Yeah, I think it is the, uh, uh, we had a very detailed discussions and uh, just to uh, keep the, uh, the industry still motivated, we have still a lot of areas need to be inclusive to growth. I think we should still work and create a confidence among the both internal and external customers, creating a better experience. Fantastic. Uh, Ms. Kaur? Yeah. So uh, I believe, uh, first of all, I would thank uh, my fellow panelists for sharing their uh, insightful uh, uh, thoughts onto it. I believe here in the digitalization and digital transformation journey, it is important uh, to uh, understand that hybrid is the way to go. Uh, it is not only going to be only cloud or the, the on-premise environment. And it is also equally important to have a talent or the people uh, who have right skills at the right time with the right mindset without which uh, no matter how uh, tools, how much good tools or best practices you deploy, uh, you, you are bound to uh, fail at that point in time. So people are a key important aspect of the entire digital journey. And it is important to learn from the failures of your own as well as of the uh, fellow uh, industry uh, team members or the uh, organizations that are following. Uh, that is what I, I would like to summarize. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Yeah, uh, all of us to share our thoughts and, and uh, hope it will be uh, useful for the uh, viewers and, uh, and industry experts. Thing is, yes, uh, uh, digital is a journey. It's not a like one-time task. 
and, and every organization has to work uh, continuously to uh, get improvement and uh, assess the user requirement and fulfill those requirements with the, all of us here. Great. Um, Mr. Kishore? Yeah, I think uh, a lot has been said uh, about digitization all across the industry and <clears throat> I thank Tech Plus Media to bring us uh, together. Uh, but as a responsible CIOs, what I believe is uh, we are not bringing a lot of white papers, a lot of contribution towards standards. I think that's what we should look at. We, we talk, we discuss a lot of things, but can we collaborate uh, together to bring in white papers for the industry, standards which can contribute towards the nation building towards a responsible industry building i think that's what <clears throat> we as uh, the uh, cios should bring in now so that the next generation sees okay this was discussed and these are the standards which can bring up they can mature over a period of time i think that's what we should be looking at uh, that's my view thank you mr purve yeah uh, first of all i like to thank uh, arun for moderating this session in such a way that you were able to bring best out of each one of us it has been really a very learning experience and it is the toughest task to do. Um, second is, um, uh, just to summarize uh, my thoughts on uh, our entire discussion, hybrid is the way to go. It can neither, it cannot be an either or approach. Second is, it's just a start. We all may be working on it since last 10 years, but I still feel that we are still started. We discover new things, new challenges on daily basis. And it's a journey which we all are traveling. I fully agree with Mr. Kishore, wherein we should all collaborate. Rather than these forums, we should all collaborate and share our best practices so that we each other can benefit from us, which in turn will help in uh, our customers benefiting. And fourth and the most important thing is that it's not our duty to look for solutions from the product companies. It is high time since the world is changing. Product companies are, are no different than us. We should also collaborate with various key product companies in order to create solutions. Rather than looking for solutions, we should work together to build solutions which are more scalable, more fitter. Fitter when I say that fitter in terms of my requirement to deliver seamless experience to my customers as well as our stakeholders, including employees. Fantastic. So uh, thank you everyone for your time and the discussions. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.